Good morning, Scallywag! Spoo here with another mindless drivel, and today we're taking a turn for the bazaar as we dive in and take a look at a story that is fondly referred to as the Mother of Bunnies, or as I like to call it, the less threatening Targaryen sister. This story is going to take us all the way back to England in the year... I forgot what year it was. This story is going to take us all the way back to September of the year 1726 and tell the story of an Englishwoman named Mary Toft. You see, in September of 1726, Mary Toft, who was just a common woman, had recently announced that she was pregnant. However, to much dismay, Mary soon would announce a miscarriage, wherein she apparently gave birth to something that resembled cat intestines. Go ahead and say, ew, I just did. So, of course, as you would, she called in her local obstetrician, a man by the name of John Howard. Once Mr. Howard arrived at Mary Toff's home, he would help her actually give birth to several cat legs and nine dead bunnies. It's unclear if Mary Toft was a furry, but uh, apparently I... Okay, I, I feel ashamed for going there myself. Of course, baffled by this situation, John Howard would go on to write several medical experts in London. And soon, Mary's story would make its way all across London, kind of in captivating people everywhere, kind of like a news story out of Florida would now, even making its way all the way to King George I. Of course, being just as curious about this as everyone else was, King George sent his personal surgeon and anatomist, Nathaniel St. Andrew, out to investigate. The day that Nathaniel St. Andrew would arrive at Mary Toff's home, she would actually give birth to rabbit number 15. So right away, let's, let's do a quick little recap here just to make sure you're on board with this story so far. In the year 1726 in England, a woman by the name of Mary Toft gave birth to cat intestines followed by cat legs followed by 15 dead rabbit bunny baby rabbits. Baby rabbit bunnies. By baby baby rabbit bunnies. Should, should I feel bad that I suddenly feel hungry? I'm going to call that a coincidence. So believe it or not, both St. Andre and Mr. Howard thought that uh, this was actually happening. Somehow this woman was giving birth to rabbits. They actually believed that while pregnant she was startled by a rabbit, and this is why this was happening. This was actually something that happened quite a lot back in these days. They called it maternal impression. And of course, if you're familiar with the story of the elephant, man. A similar thing was actually believed in his case. While Joseph Merrick's mother was startled by an elephant while she was pregnant, to such an extent that he was born looking like looking like him. But fortunately not everyone was so convinced. Most medical professionals realized the fact that a rabbit's lungs could not develop inside a human's womb. Or, you know, they actually paid attention while they were in school. In fact, one of the dead baby bunnies uh, had poop inside of it. That was found to contain undigested straw and hay. And another physician even found that one of the bunnies had been cut in half with a knife. So while I sometimes worry about the future of America and, and how not so smart we are nowadays, thanks to the things that we have smartphones so we don't have to be smart people. It is nice to know that we're way smarter than they were back in the 1700s. Progress! But even with all of that, St. Andre was still convinced that Toft had given birth to bunnies naturally somehow, and he actually brought her over to London for more investigation. As you would expect, once she arrived in London, word got out to the people, and people just absolutely flocked in to see this miraculous woman. Her story even made it into several major newspapers at the time that covered the story of this absolute um, miracle. And I use that term loosely because if, if God works miracles that way, then he's got a sicker sense of humor than I thought. But as coincidence would have it, once she arrived in London, the birth suddenly stopped. Can't imagine how that would be the case. Not at home anymore, suddenly surrounded by people all the time. And in case that didn't somehow blow the cover off of everything, a servant was actually caught trying to sneak a dead rabbit into the hospital. So that kind of sets off all the alarms for everyone. Her cover is blown, so a surgeon actually threatens to perform surgery on her if she doesn't come clean. So of course, Mary Toff does admit that the whole thing was a big hoax. Apparently she wanted to actually get a job Job in a freak show. And just given the idea, I would say that her goal was a success. But how did she pull it off? I don't think you want to know, because it's pretty much exactly what you think it would be. Uh, she, um, 
she had uh, been been killing the bunnies, and there's really not a tactful way to say it. You see, she was shoving them into her vagina and then pushing them back out. Yep, yeah, that that happened. And now they're on their way to Mary Toff's house now. So Mary was, of course, arrested and uh, sentenced to prison for fraud. And, of course, once word got out that several big, prominent medical people were somehow actually fooled by this whole thing, it absolutely ruined their careers, people lost their jobs, and just created a lot of problems for pretty much everybody involved. As you would, you know, figure would happen, a lot of the newspapers would satirize the whole thing, the, the Twitter of the 1700s just absolutely lit up. The hashtag Dumb Dr. Bunny Mama was trending all over the place. But of course, the aftermath of this whole thing really kind of was set in stone by this point. People like St. Andre especially was, you know, ridiculed and just his career was ruined, not just for his involvement, but to the extent that he actually believed it was really happening. In fact, it was on December 7th of 1726 that Mary Toft had given her confession. Just a few days earlier, on December 3rd, St. Andre had actually published a paper, a 40-page pamphlet entitled A Short Narrative of an Extraordinary Delivery of Rabbits. In this little pamphlet, he had actually staked his entire reputation. And as previously stated, uh, his reputation was gone. At, at gone, yeah, just gone at that point. He would then go on to completely recant everything that he had said on, like, December the 9th, so just a couple of days later. And his partner during the investigation, a man by the name of Samuel Molyneux, hopefully I'm saying that right, I, I don't know, French names, who was the secretary for the Prince of Wales and was also sent out on the investigation with St. Andre. Well, suddenly and suspiciously, Molyneux dies from poisoning, which is always a little suspect, uh, especially given what happened next. So what do you do when you've just been involved in this massive hoax that went completely viral via 1700s terms, and your partner in this investigation suddenly dies of poisoning? That's right! You marry his widow almost immediately. Now, many actually believed, including Molyneux's cousin, that St. Andre was actually responsible for the poisoning. Unfazed by that completely, St. Andre just, you know, sued them for defamation. And as if it wasn't already done so by the pamphlet and everything else, his career and his new wife's career were permanently just completely destroyed. So he retired to the countryside where he would die in 1776. After he went on to publish a diary of the entire investigation, including not only the investigation, all of the medical observations, but also a full account of Mary's confession. Meanwhile, a couple of weeks after the whole fraud th thing, on January 7th of 1727, both John Howard and Mary Toft afear afeared. Afeared. Ooh, scared. Be afeared. Be very afeared. Appeared before the court, where Howard was actually fined 800 pounds, which by today's standard would be about 117,000 pounds. And then he returned to Surrey to continue practicing as an obstetrician until he died in 1755. It's unclear as to whether or not he gave birth to any more human-animal hybrids, but that's a story for another day. And for months following, Mary Toff became a local celebrity. People would show up to her home just to catch a glimpse of the bunny woman. But she had actually grown quite ill by this point. She was released from prison on the 8th of April, 1727, so just after a few months, because it was completely unclear as to what kind of charge should be placed on her. Yes, there was fraud involved, but ultimately it was just a lie. It wasn't really anything criminal. Un un unless we're talking moral criminal things cuz yeah and is it just me or is it ironic that she was released in April you know right around Easter she ended up not making any money off the entire thing and she returned back to Surrey to live out the rest of her days and unfortunately other than having a baby sometime around 1728 around February somewhere in that area not much is really known of what happened to her for the rest of her life until she died other than she briefly reappeared in 1740 when she was imprisoned for receiving stolen goods insert joke here about 
said stolen goods. And she died in 1763 or something, I don't know. Now that's kind of an anticlimactic ending to a story with a woman putting uh, rabbit parts in, in, in her fun spot. But that's the way history goes. It doesn't always have a happy ending, unless you count putting bunny parts in the fun spot. The no-no square, the rabbit hole, if you will. Sorry, I had to throw that one in there. See, if, if there's a line, then I want to be like three steps over that line, then that's when I'm happy. So what do you guys think? I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this story. Drop it in the comments below. Be as graphic as you want. Be sure to comment, like, share, and please subscribe. It's one little click, takes you half a second, and then hey, you get all the goodness. Because we do post videos here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, while you're out here surfing the uh, World Wide Webs, how long has it been since someone referred to it as the World Wide Web? Be sure to jump over to www.geekycool.com. We have partnered up with that website uh, to continue to bring you all things nerd. Articles, top 10 lists, movie reviews, game reviews, opinion pieces, panels, exclusive video content, and possibly a YouTube channel coming soon. Pretty much anything and everything you can possibly want from a geek website. And they are sponsoring us here at the channel, and kind of in return, we are sponsoring them as well. So please go and check out that website. Again, it is www.geekycool.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. A little different today, so uh, it was kind of a last minute piece that I just happened to stumble on and was like, oh, got to do a video on that. So I apologize if it's a little choppy, but uh, but yeah, we're back to the regular stuff come Wednesday. Uh, got a couple of other things planned out for this week that we'll kind of get back to a little bit of the norm. But uh, let me know, do you guys want to see more stuff like this? Just little bizarre, weird things from history or conspiracy theories or you know, cryptids, that kind of thing, urban legends. Uh, uh, or just, you know, do you like the movie stuff? Let me know. Drop that in the comments below as well. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you soon.